According to Republican Senator Tom Cotton, the prison capital of the planet doesn't have enough people behind bars. And efforts to reform the criminal justice system are dangerous. If anything, we have an under-incarceration problem. In reality, with only about 5% of the global population, the US has more than 20% of the world's prisoners. Federal and state prisons house over 2 million people, more than any other nation, at a cost of about $80 billion per year. As a result, about one out of every 110 American adults is behind bars, and about one in 35 is under some form of correctional control. Despite this, during a speech at the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. Thursday, Cotton argued that proposals to ease the mass incarceration crisis, including mandatory sentences, giving more discretion to judges, allowing felons to vote, and decreasing barriers to employment, are misguided and dangerous. Violent crime is at a 40-year low. Property crime is at a 50-year low. But this didn't just happen by accident. It happened because of policy changes like broken windows policing, mandatory minimum sentences for violent criminals, three strikes laws, and other reforms. These policies helped to take our streets back. Too many people, it would seem, have forgotten these hard-learned lessons. They take our historically low crime rates for granted, acting as if safe neighborhoods are the natural state of man. This disturbing amnesia also comes with a policy agenda as ambitious as it is wrong-headed. These policies are not merely wrong, they are dangerous. The truth is, you cannot decrease the severity and certainty of sentences without increasing crime. It's simply impossible. If anything, we have an under-incarceration problem. Like many U.S. politicians, especially Republicans, Cotton believes that more punishment leads to less crime. But decades of research show there's no relationship between incarceration and crime rates in the U.S. For example, from 1999 to 2009, New York's prison population declined by about 20% while its crime rate also dropped by about 29%. From 2000 to 2010, Indiana increased its prison population by about 45%, while its crime rate fell by a meager 0.08%. At the Hudson Institute, Cotton also claimed that people will end up back in prison no matter how much rehabilitation improves. But in actuality, countries that employ a philosophy of rehabilitation in their prisons have lower recidivism rates, lower incarceration rates, and less overall crime. Currently, the U.S. has one of the highest recidivism rates in the world, at nearly 77%. This means that about three-quarters of people released from prison are re-arrested within five years. Meanwhile, in Norway, for example, the prison recidivism rate is a mere 20%. Moreover, its incarceration rate is about 71 per 100,000 people, compared to about 716 per 100,000 in the U.S. Norway also has a lower crime rate than the United States. Writing in The Atlantic, Doran Larson, a professor at Hamilton College, explains just how different the prison systems in Scandinavian countries are from those in the US. This includes the fact that some Norwegian prisons are open facilities, where cell blocks look like dorms at a state university, and inmates can roam freely or even leave the prison grounds at their own accord to work or study. Of course, violent criminals are kept in more traditional closed prisons. But even there, the emphasis is on rehabilitation as opposed to punishment. According to Larson, this is all because throughout Scandinavia, criminal justice policy rarely enters political debate. Decisions about best practices are left to professionals in the field, who are often published criminologists and consult closely with academics, he said. But not only does Cotton want more state and federal prisoners, in the past, the senator has also said more people should be locked away in the Guantanamo Bay military prison, where most inmates are actually innocent, but still illegally and indefinitely held without trials, not to mention tortured. Other samples from Cotton's record include trying to derail the Iran nuclear deal, advocating for the expansion of the killer drone program, saying bombing makes us safer, and calling food stamp recipients addicts. 